Okay. So, two more things to talk about on Kogos. One is where do you put your closure? And then we're just going to have a brief conversation about search drawings because that's what we do with your Kogos when you're done with them most of the time. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this simple example down here for a minute. So we have a map like this, and then it goes along a creek or a river. Okay, and you got a closure here. Where's the best place to put the closure area on this map, do you think? Everybody, nobody's sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would put it in one of these three places, probably. So why do you think I would pick one of those three places to put my closure area? Let's say they show a set monument here, a set monument here. Okay, so of all these lines, which lines do you think are going to be the most the least accurate, the bottom three. The lines along the river, right? What's the problem with rivers? What do rivers do over time? They move. They move. So if you're out doing a boundary survey, what's the probably least carefully surveyed line? The river. And if you've ever been out to actually do a boundary survey, what is down by the river that makes it really hard to do a field survey? You're gonna go up. All the trees and the sticker bushes and the poison oak is down by the river, right? Yeah, so that's probably where I would put my closure here. Okay, so now most of the time, I don't, if you guys are just doing a Kogo, it really doesn't matter to me where you put your closure area as long as you mark it, okay, and, and come talk to me if there's a large closure area. But as you guys start to learn more, you start to do more on our boundary surveys, then I want you, you're gonna have to start to think a little more carefully about where the closure errors, because what happens is when I go in to build a search drawing or build a search drawing or resolve a boundary, I sometimes move your guys' closure errors to where it makes sense. So that's why I'm kind of trying to introduce you to that next step. Okay, so let's say, let's go to this situation that's a little trickier here. So you always want, kind of, as a general rule, you put your closure errors on the line that you think were the least carefully surveyed, which is usually they're going along a river or a ridge top or something like that. That's typically, or if you got some lines that are monumented and some lines that aren't monumented, generally you put your closure error on the lines that don't have a monument. Right? Okay, those are just some kind of rules of thumb. Okay, so let's look at this example now. We're surveying this parcel. Okay, and we've cogoed some maps around here. So let's say we've cogoed A, B, C, and G. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you guys to this concept of search drawings a little bit, and then we're going to talk about why you might move your closure errors or, or, or change where you put your closure errors depending on what you're serving. So, when we're going to do a boundary survey, you guys, we take your Kogos usually and we, we glue your Kogos together in CAD, okay? And that drawing that we do that in is called the search drawing, the boundary search drawing, okay? Elena, you may have built one of those for me once or twice, I can't remember. Okay, so the boundary search drawing Everything that goes into the boundary search, search drawing is a record. In other words, it's from a record measurement. It's from a map or a deed. It's a Kogo. Okay, it's what we call a Kogo. Okay, and then we glue those maps together. Now, that's not final line work. Okay, that's just record line work. And mostly what we use that for is to plan out where we're going to go look for corners. Like when you do corner search with me, right, and we have a stakeout court. Remember when we went up to Wilsonville and we actually had coordinates to go look for the monument? Remember we found them in the brush? Right, I calc those in the search drawing. Does that make sense? I had some line work that told me where the corners were. I created the point. We put the point in the total station, then we went out to the field and staked it out. Okay? All right. So, let's say we're surveying this parcel here. We'll make this the lands of heart. So, we're surveying the lands of heart. Okay. And we've got a closure, we've got a two foot closure error on G that we can't fix. Okay, so I'm going to label this. This could be a question on a CST exam. Okay, if you're working on the search drawing for a survey of the lands of heart, and you've got a two foot closure error on the map that Angelo co coded on G, 
and you got to decide you're going to move this closure error so that it, it works the best for the survey we're doing. <clears throat> Which corner do you think you might put your closure error on? E or D. Yeah, I like E or D, right? F or C, maybe, but E or D is probably the best. Yeah, there's two corners you almost certainly wouldn't put it on. E or D. Because that's going to mess our world up, right? Okay, so same thing applies to here. If you've got a closure error on B, you probably don't want to put it here or here. Okay, so we're, we're going to make our Kogos kind of best fit our parcel. Now, as the boundary surveyor, I still have to think about potentially, that doesn't mean if it fits your parcel, you just ignore everything else, right? I still have to think about why do I have a two-foot closure error and what is the impact of that? But as a general rule, when we're just doing the search drawing, in other words, we're not doing the actual final resolve line, but we're just doing the search drawing, you want to push your closure errors away from the parcel that you're surveying, right? Okay, so, yeah? At what point, because I know you've said this before, I just kind of always mm -hmm. forget. At what point do you want us to be like, hey, Landon, this, this closure error is kind of big? Because, you know, we... Yeah, so I would say as a general rule, if you have more than two-tenths of a foot, we probably need to talk. Okay? And you guys will get a better feel for that as you gain experience. But, like, look, if you come to me with a map that was done in 1905 and it's got a two-foot closure error, that's probably reasonable. If you come to me with a map that was done in 2008 and it's got a two-foot closure error, either we made a mistake or there's a bust on the map. Like, as surveyors have gotten, like, there's no reason why a modern survey, like anything done in the last 40 years, shouldn't close within a few hundreds of a foot as a general rule. Okay, so that's a good rule of thumb. Look, if you come to me and you got a closure error of 3 hundredths, I don't care where you put it. Because we can't even measure 3 hundredths. Right? Okay, so good, good question though. So one of the things you guys will learn as, as you work for me is when we're covering a map and we get a closure error, we got to take a step back and say, all right, hey, before we lose a bunch of sleep over this, is this closure error reasonable given how old the map is and the type of terrain they are in? So like, look, down in the valley, we have less closure error than we have up in the mountains. It's harder to survey in the mountains, right? Or in the forest, okay? So you gotta look at all that. All right, so now that you guys have been taught that, before you're assigned a Kogo, it would be helpful to know what? When the map works. Okay, yeah, we can talk about, we, yeah, so that's a good, a lady makes a good point. That's not what I was thinking, but it's a good point. Like, yeah, you can have a conversation with me about, Hey, Landon, what kind of closure errors do you think I should expect on this map? It's okay to ask that. That'd be good. And then I'd give me an opportunity to teach you a little bit. Okay, the other thing is you should probably know what parcel we're surveying. Because then that can maybe help you to decide where to put your closure errors, right? So do you can see how I'm trying to get you. I don't want you to just be robots, right? If you understand what we're doing, then you can make better decisions about how you do your work. Okay, so we're not going to do a detailed conversation about search errors. Search errors. Search drawings. Okay, but basically that's the drawings that we use to put all your Kogos together, okay? And what we'll do is, on another Funky First Friday, we'll do a, we'll do a, we'll spend a couple hours just talking about search drawings. Oh, and you never know, between now and then you guys might actually work on a search drawing with me, right? All right, so, I think that's everything I wanted to teach you about. Oh, one last thing for Kogos, this would be good for Angel. So if we have a two-foot closure error on G, and I use the Kogo to come up with some search coordinates and we go out to look for monuments in the G, look for the corners on G. Angelo, my search area better be at least how big? Two feet. Better be at least two feet, because if I got a two foot closure, any of my search coordinates could be off at least two feet. Now we always search more than two feet. Like I generally, at a, at a minimum, I'm usually searching a, searching a five to 10 foot radius, but if you've got an old map with a 20 foot closure, how big do your search area have to be? At least 20 feet. <laughs>